Welcome to Manuel Antonio. This slice of paradise along Costa Rica's coast offers more than just your average beach experience. It's a lush playground for nature lovers and thrill seekers alike. Imagine lounging on the soft sands, sipping a cold drink, when suddenly you hear something in the trees. Is it a bird? Is it a plane? Nope. It's just a monkey climbing a tree like they own the place. But Manuel Antonio isn't just about chilling and soaking up the sun. It's also home to one of Costa Rica's most biodiverse national parks. You'll find yourself face to face with macaw birds, iguanas, and maybe even lucky to see a sloth in all its glorious slumber. So whether you're here for the wildlife, the adrenaline, or just to escape the daily grind, Manuel Antonio has something for everyone. So grab your sunscreen and your sense of adventure, and let's dive into the wild side of Costa Rica. Hey guys, and welcome to the channel. So in today's vlog, we'll be focusing on our most recent trip to Manuel Antonio National Park and recommend some of the nearby places, some of the food to eat, and share some of the reminders before you book your trip. So after not seeing the beach for almost one year, we decided to take a break from the daily grind, but we needed to consider a place that wasn't so far from the city. Our usual go-to places are Guanacaste, they have really nice beaches such as Playas del Coco or Tamarindo for some nice surfing spots. But this time around, we only had a limited weekend and it would normally take five hours for you to get to places like Tamarindo. And with a setup like that, you might end up needing a vacation from your short vacation. So the best alternative we had was Manuel Antonio. Even though it has the smallest national park within Costa Rica, it's one of the most popular ones because it's not far from the city and it has a great blend of sea and rainforest. Another factor to consider is the timing of your visit. Since we planned this in February, we wanted to really maximize the sunny weather during that time. And you might ask yourself, when's the best time to visit Costa Rica? The first thing to know about the climate in Costa Rica is the concept of microclimates and altitude. Due to its topography, the weather can be very different from one place to the next. We've experienced getting rain in a specific area, then after a few hundred meters, you're back in dry territory. The tropical climate features a brief and mild dry season, countered by a lengthy rainy season, particularly in the southern regions. The peak average temperature reaches 89 degrees Fahrenheit, with the lowest average being 73 degrees. The dry season spans from January through March, or January through April, depending if you're lucky. All in all, temperatures don't fluctuate much throughout the year. Simply put, it either rains or doesn't. In short, Costa Rica is a fantastic destination to visit any time of the year. Personally, for us, when we do want to go to the beach or any outdoorsy activity, we usually book our trips between mid-December to April, and that's during the dry season. But that doesn't mean you need to skip visiting during the rainy season either, as recently it hasn't been raining as consistent as prior years. Also, there are supposedly fewer tourists between May to November, which means Costa Rica is less crowded and less expensive during that time. Speaking of costs, we now need to figure out where we need to stay in Manuel Antonio. I'll be sharing you three places you can consider based on our experience. During our visit in 2020, we stayed in Costa Verde. This place is the definition of a luxe tropical experience. It was our first time ever in Manuel Antonio, and this definitely set the tone for our stay. Each room provides a balcony with a mesmerizing bird's eye view of the majestic coastline. We got the bungalow E5 room with two bedrooms, and each room having its own bathroom and balcony entrance. One room having a king-sized bed, and the main room having two single queen beds. It also comes with a kitchenette, microwave, TV, and separate air conditioning. Costa Verde is also known for their 727 fuselage home. This option features a refurbished vintage 1965 Boeing 727, and guests have the opportunity to experience the charm of aviation history amidst the lush surroundings. Rates will vary per season, so for more details, you can check Costa Verde's website, which I'll link in the description below. 
On our next trip, we ended up staying in the Falls Resort Hotel. Since it was only my wife and I this time around, we wanted a place that wasn't as big but still comfortable and cozy to be in. Nestled within a tranquil garden, the Falls Resort's location is just a stroll away from the best restaurants and beaches. We booked the regular room and it already comes with a tasty breakfast and coffee. While you're here, embrace the delightful company of white-faced capuchin monkeys, iguanas, and various bird species that may pay you friendly visits. The regular room rate is around $150 to $177 per night, but be sure to check their website for the exact rates for when you're planning to visit. Last but not the least, in this trip, we were a party of five, so we decided to rent an Airbnb at Capostown, just 15 to 20 minutes away from Manuel Antonio. It's a three-bedroom, two-bathroom B&B with a spacious living room and large smart TV. The kitchen boasts a generous counter space with new appliances, and the cherry on top was the inviting private pool with patio just outside. Situated within a small community, the area was quite peaceful, safe, and close to the town's amenities, with a combination of friendly permanent residents. If you're looking for a convenient, comfortable, and affordable B&B option, this will definitely suit those needs. After booking your hotel or B&B, now it's time to reserve a spot in the National Park. During our earlier years in Costa Rica back in 2020, it was so simple to get in the park. You could simply walk in, purchase your tickets, and you're in. However, recently, with efforts to mitigate the human impact on the flora and fauna of Manuel Antonio National Park, entrances are very limited at around 1,000 people per day. As such, they've modernized the process and updated it to an online reservation. Make sure to visit the website and reserve weeks before your trip to avoid booking in the last minute. The park opens as early as 7 a.m., so the best would be to book an early morning tour with a professional naturalist guide to avoid the crowds and increase your odds of seeing more wildlife. Park entrances will be $16 for adults and $5 for kids between 2 to 12 years old. Take note the pricing here are for non-residents. Here are some important park reminders to take note of so you can go ahead and pause the video quick. Last but not the least is how to get there and what to expect. Since we've been living here for some time now, we always take our car when we go to the beach. The drive to Manuel Antonio will take around 3 hours. And if you're coming from the Juan Santa Maria International Airport or staying in the capital in San Jose, you will be passing along Route 27, then exit onto Route 34, which has some scenic views of the Pacific Ocean. Keep in mind, Route 27 is a toll highway. There are three toll booths between San Jose and the Pacific Coast, so it's good to prepare some cash in local currency. Together, they cost roughly around 2,000 colones, or about $4, which you can pay in cash or card. Expect some traffic in Highway 27, especially from Friday afternoon to the weekend, so it's best to travel in the morning of weekdays. So with that said, you're all set. All you need to do is sit back, relax, and enjoy the experience.
Manny Pacquiao. Mi amigo con Filipinas, papá, el mejor. Manny Pacquiao, mi amigo de Costa Rica. Filipinas y Costa Rica, pueblos hermanos. Brother. Pacquiao. Manny Pacquiao, the best.